Okay, so we've identified the chiral centers, we've assigned R or S to each, now let's compare them. And when you compare them, make sure you're comparing the corresponding stereocenters. For example, the stereocenter here corresponds to the stereocenter here because they're surrounded by the same atoms. This carbon is surrounded by an OCH3, an OH, and an H. Just like this carbon is surrounded by an OCH3, an OH, and an H. And the same thing goes for this chiral center. Compare that to its corresponding chiral center, which is right here, because they're both surrounded by the same atoms. So if we compare the stereocenters of these two compounds, you'll notice that these compounds are the same at one place and different at another place. At this stereocenter, these compounds are both S and S, but at these stereocenters, this compound is S, but this compound is R. And hey you guys, I told you that if you're the same at one place and different at another place, then you're considered what? Diastereomers. So let's write this down. So when we compare these two compounds, we find that this compound has stereocenters that are S and S, and this is compared to this compound that has stereocenters that are R and S. So we notice that these two compounds are the same at one stereocenter, here and here, but different at these stereocenters. And hey, if you are the same at one place and different at another place, then what are you called? Diastereomers. So these are considered diastereomers. If compounds are exact opposites, if they have opposite orientations at every single stereocenter, then they are considered enantiomers. So if this had been like SS versus RR, then hey, they're exact opposites here and here, here and here, so they'd be considered enantiomers. But hey, that's not the case in this example. This was SS versus RS, same at one place and different at another, so they were considered diastereomers. And hey, you guys, just in case you're wondering, identical compounds will be the same at all stereocenters. So for example, if this was SS versus SS, then you'd have the exact same compound. So this would be identical compounds. Okay, so let's check out a bunch of different stereocenter combinations just to make sure you have this enantiomer, diastereomer, identical compound stuff down cold, all right? All right, so let me go ahead and just erase some of this stuff. Okay, so I've put up a bunch of different combinations here, you guys. Here are the stereocenters for one compound, and we're comparing these to the stereocenters of another compound, okay? So hey, say you're dealing with compounds that are R and S. What are these going to be? Enantiomers, diastereomers, or identical compounds? Well hey you guys, you can't even have a diastereomer unless you have more than one chiral center, right? So this is obviously not a diastereomer. And you also know that these aren't identical compounds because if they were identical, they would have the same orientation. It would be R versus R or S versus S to be identical. But we don't have that here. We have exact opposites, R in one compound and S in the other compound. So we would call these enantiomers. Okay, so let's look at another combination, RR versus SS. And this time we're dealing with multiple stereocenters. Okay, so hey, each of these compounds has two stereocenters, so it has the possibility of being a diastereomer but, hey, these guys are exact opposites. This compound is R at this stereocenter, this one is S. This one is R, this one is S. These are exact opposites. So this would also be considered a set of enantiomers. Let's look at another example. This time it's RS versus SR. And these guys are exact opposites again. At this stereocenter, this compound is R, 
and this one is S. This one is S, this one is R. They're exact opposites. So these are also going to be enantiomers. Let's look at another example. This time RR versus SR. And finally, you guys, we see two compounds that are the same at one place and different at another. At this stereocenter, these compounds are both R, this one is R, and this one is R, but at this stereocenter, this compound is R, whereas this one is S. So they're the same at one stereocenter and different at another, making these diastereomers. Okay, so hopefully this enantiomer diastereomer stuff is really starting to sink in, but let's do one more example. This time, it's going to be RRR versus RSR. And we see that these two compounds are the same at one or more places and different at one or more places, right? Because, hey, at this first stereocenter, this one is R and this one is R. At the third stereocenter, this one is R, this one is R. But hey, at the second stereocenter, this one is R and this one is S. They're the same at two places, but different at another, making these also diastereomers. If this had been RRR versus SSS, that would have been exact opposites, making them enantiomers. If these were identical compounds, it would be RRR versus RRR, okay? Okay, so just to refresh on the strategy for how to determine whether compounds are enantiomers, diastereomers, or identical compounds, let me give you these three simple steps to follow. Okay, so here's the three steps for you to follow. Number one, locate the chiral centers first. Number two, determine the RRS configuration of each one of those chiral centers. And finally, number three, compare the RRS configurations of both compounds and apply the rules that we talked about before. Enantiomers are exact opposites. Diastereomers are the same at one or more places and different at one or more places. And identical compounds will just have the exact same configuration for each compound, right?